Is your media a reflection of reality? In a world transformed, what will make you feel safer? Isolation or community? Are you going the right way or are you being led somewhere? Which direction? What is truth? What is fake? In a world corrupted, you need to descend. So join us in the depths or remain in the shallows. Hey folks, next up a good cat. Uh, and it's funny that I would call him a good cat since he's the dog whisperer, Cesar Alon. I think he ditched the dog whisperer way back. He's got, uh, well, he's got a great, I love the, the rubric that he works off of, that there are no bad pets, there are bad owners, and you train the owners, and then you have a good pet, a good dog. And I think that's probably a lot of truth of that. We'll talk to him about it. Cesar Alon, right after this on Dennis Miller Plus One. Hey folks, welcome to Dennis Miller Plus One. I've talked to this cat before. Uh, I shouldn't call the dog whisperer a cat. Sorry, my faux hipster stuff. Caesar Milan to the show. Caesar's a dog trainer with over 25 years experience working with man's best friend. He is most well known, obviously, for his Emmy nominated series Dog Whisperer with Caesar Milan before his successful show. Caesar focused on rehabilitating severely aggressive dogs and founded the Dog Psychology Center in Los Angeles. That's a quandary for a dog, because they're often told to get off the couch, but at the Dog Psychology Center, they are encouraged to hop up on the couch. Here's a new show called Caesar Milan, Better Human, Better Dog, like that, which is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Caesar Milan, how are you, my friend? Doing great, great, but I do want to say something. I don't train dogs, I train people. You know, so I know they put me in the category of training dogs. I don't, I don't, I make sure that I train the human so they know how to connect, communicate, and then train the dog. That's what makes a, a dog well-trained. Point noted, my friend. Thank you. Now listen, before we get started, I spent the weekend with my son and uh, his friend's dog, Benny, who is the best dog I've ever met. He's a doodle. He's the sweetest dog. God, all he wants is love. And Caesar, I fancy that when I'm petting him and we're having fun together, please tell me that when I think he's smiling, he's smiling. Because I hate the buzzkill thing where the people say, no, he's thirsty or he's this and that. When dogs go like that, uh, how often can I assume they're smiling or not at all? Well, if they're not thirsty, they're definitely smiling. If they're not hot, they're definitely smiling. They do imitate a behavior, right? So if you're sad, they get sad. If you're excited, they get excited. So if you smile, they do imitate. All Imitation right. is, is part of learning. Yeah. Well, there you go, because I'm always smiling at him, and occasionally he looks back at me. I think, I hope he's as happy with my company as I am with him, Absolutely. because he is the sweetest creature on God's green earth. All right, um, tell me about the, uh, the new show. It's Caesar Milan, Better Human, Better Dog. That alludes to what we just talked about, where you train the owners and uh, not the dogs. Um, tell me about the show. Where is it going to be? Uh, where can we see it? And tell me, tell me about the overview. Well, it's already airing on National Geographic. Every Wednesday it's on Disney+. Plus. But the whole point is for people to learn to utilize their home. The home should feel safe, peace, and love. This is the energy of the house. Your energy should feel calm, comfort, love, and joy. And your community, your family, should be in agreement, committed, and follow through. Then your dog will imitate or will show that this is the behavior in this house with this family, with these activities. A dog is the only member of the family that actually tells the truth. So if the family practice anxiety, the dog is going to show anxiety. If the, practice, if the family doesn't practice ex exercise, the dog is going to show lack of fitness. But you see what I mean? So the dog is always going to tell the human the reality. So I wanted to create a place where people can come, get rehabilitated right away together with the dog and the family. And that's why I created the Dog Psychology Center. You know, Caesar, I would assume as the pandemic impacted everything on the planet Earth, it impacted pet adoption. 
I would imagine a lot of people felt that they had cabin fever and might have went into dog adoption with, uh, I don't know, mistaken intentions. Tell me how you feel it impacted it and how is it, how is it served or not served our canine community? Well, uh, as you know, the, the shelters were full before the pandemic, so it, it was not that the human actually uh, wanted to rescue dogs, it's just the human, they want to be alone during a, a, such a chaotic moment on earth, you know? But at the same time, when you enter in a, in a relationship without knowledge, the outcome is not gonna be good. That's why we, I jumped right away, said, guys, we have to make a show right away for people that just rescue a dog, but now they're going inside a, 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 a crate in a way. You know, they're gonna be inside a house like the dog was before the pandemic came. Before the human worked too much, now the human doesn't work and doesn't do anything. You know, so now it's the human and the dog spending too much time inside a crate that we call home. You know, Caesar, when I hear you talking, you talk about the human. <laughs> I know in your heart, maybe, it is. It is. maybe, I'm just saying maybe you've been, the human race can be brutal. And the canine race, I find if you treat them well, almost seem unconditionally loving. But I wonder if during your life you've accumulated a track record with the human race where you're less, uh, less amenable to their company than you are to dogs. But think about it, we're the only species that follow unstable leaders. So only humans follow instability, you know? So the dogs don't understand why humans follow unstable leaders. Um, <laughs> what about, I just read a story about a pack of wild dogs attacking somebody. It was a horrific story. You see these stories come up every day. There must be uh, unsound leaders in the canine community too, wouldn't you concede? No, no, no. That's a territorial behavior. That's a family behavior. They don't just look for trouble. They just protect home. They protect family. You know, human, that's behavior out of uh, pure aggression. You know, but a, a dog is not going to go look for you into your house. You, that means you pass by his house. When's, you know your I mean? yeah. when's your first dog? Where are you at as a young human when you get it? And how did it uh, start to begin to heal you or did it? Tell me about your first encounter with your first dog. Well, I grew up in a farm, so we never just had one dog. We always had a pack of dogs. That's where the knowledge of the psychology of dogs, you know, how dogs behave among each other. Most people in the city just had one dog. I was a farm kid with a pack of dogs, you know? So I, ne I, could, I could never give you like, a, a, you know, my past about one dog. A, it was a pack of dogs with a pack of humans, you know, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mom, my dad. So I grew up in a very traditional environment, you know, which is a large group of humans. And then, and the farm is a large group of animals. So it was, that was, that was, that was my life. Um, I, I read an interesting story. I had never heard this before. Perhaps it's anecdotal, but what did, what did Jada Pinkett Smith see in you? A certain sort of empathy that allowed her to help you early on? It, it seemed that she played an integral part, and that's so touching to me. Tell me about that. Well, you know, this, every, every once in a while, you, you get to meet people like angels that you can see that help your life. So when I, when I started working with Jada's dog, Saki, uh, she, you know, Jada was coming back to South Central and take lessons, and at one point, I just felt open to say, hey, you know what, I would like to have a TV show or a radio show, because back then I used to li listen to Rick Dees in the morning. And I would like to have a radio show because, you know, you can teach people through that. Was, and then she said, well, for that, you have to speak English. So she sent an English teacher so I can learn English, so I can, you know, accomplish my dream. Perhaps you should go back and honor the great Rick Dees and cut a version of Disco Dog here for your new show. <laughs> so, I, I, I think I remember Rick having an unexpected hit with Disco Duck, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but he certainly ruled yeah. the roost for a while there back on uh, L.A. radio. Um, you know, I saw, I saw something today, uh, Caesar, that absolutely broke my heart. And I'm wondering how these dogs will be. When we pull out of there, uh, the evacuation, uh, many of these, train, you know, these dogs that work with the soldiers are left behind in these crates. It had to be the grimmest picture I've well, there are many grim pictures that come across our screens. Now, I looked at that and I thought, my God, what are they going to make of this? Will a dog like that be able to come out and adapt to a new world? Or is that dog scarred until he gets back to a, shall we say, more civilized world? What's your thoughts? 
But this is what happened also to humans. Remember, they can make a human a soldier, but not a soldier a human. So they, they can make a dog, a trained dog, but when it comes for the dog to retire, nobody knows how to send him back to his normal. So I have rehabilitated many dogs that come from war zones, right? Because they're in constant level of stress. So they don't do dog behavior. They don't do follow, play, explore. They don't go to a dog park. They don't go to a dog beach. So they don't get to practice that state of mind. Their job is war, 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 war. So there is a, there is a way to bring them back, but whoever is going to keep them for the rest of their life, they also have to be a knowledgeable handler because those guys are a machine. So anything that goes wrong, any trigger, boom, they go back into, uh, you know, uh, a, a soldier. It's a, it's a Navy SEAL inside that dog now. Well, listen, so, what, one, could only, one can only hope they have part of that in them because you, as you watch this evacuation, I know in the conflagrations of men, there's great sadness and indeed madness, but when you see them bouncing young children on their knees and trying to get them out to safety, I can't say that you can't train a soldier to be a man. Indeed, it is the very essence of humanity to me in many ways. Uh, we're talking to Caesar Milan, and he has a new show, Better Human, Better Dog. Caesar, I, I can't believe that the dog whisperer ever ended. That seemed like such a... <laughs> you talk about major home runs. That was about as home runny as a, as a show can get. Who makes that decision at some time? Perfect title. Perfect toast. Per you did. Okay, tell me why. What, tell me about it. Well, it was it was time to to evolve. You know, I think uh, uh, the dog whisper was a was a was a good way to introduce the idea that uh, that a person doesn't train dogs, that a person trains humans. And now with my pack, now you know, with my sons being older and a group of young people that I've been working with now it's a pack of human helping your family or helping somebody's family which is to me that's what makes you a better human right because we're pack oriented we need to learn to help each other and so through a dog and, and and this new generation way of looking at the world more natural more simple more profound you know my kids and and, and their friends pretty much are helping me to change the world so i just wanted to make sure it's a pack as well it takes a pack to really transform the world the dog whisperer, yeah, it was good. But then everybody said, well, he has magic. So he's the only one who can do it. So now it's like it's a pack of people doing rehabilitation. So I'm very, very proud of it. Well, listen, I'm a, we're going to talk more to Caesar about his start and all that and uh, where it goes from here. Uh, I'm a dog person. There are times I can't even forgive certain people who abuse dogs. There was a, I won't say his name, I don't want to give him that, but when people fight dogs, I know people say it's culture, and I, I look back and I go, Jesus, that is about as grim as it gets to punish a dog who doesn't fight well, so I can't abide by it. But I'm touched that he is, uh, I don't know, so empathetic with these dogs. Think about the dogs in your life, folks. It's like Seinfeld used to do that great bit where he said, the, the beauty of dogs is every night I come home and the dog says, it's that guy, it's that guy, <laughs> he's back. They're such sweet creatures that when I do run across somebody who can't abide dogs, I often think, hmm, I need to know more about this person. That's a pretty big right. poker tell. Caesar Milan, uh, right after this, uh, Dennis Miller plus one. Hey folks, welcome back to Dennis Miller Plus One. We're joined by, you know the face, Caesar Milan, um, many years known as the Dog Whisperer. We just heard that he put, put the show down of his own volition. He has founded the Dog Psychology Center in Los Angeles. He has a new show called Caesar Milan, Better Human, Better Dog, which is now streaming on Disney Plus. Um, you help humans, as you said, at the Psychology Center in Los Angeles. Isn't it kind of interesting, Caesar? Uh, I would say these people are predisposed to want to be kind and want to be good owners if they would go to something called a psychology center. The first step is to acknowledge you need help. I'm touched that people would come there for their pets. Well, it's knowledge, right? So dog lover means you just know how to love dogs, but knowledgeable when, is when you know how to connect, communicate. So you need knowledge to be with elephants, not just love. But dog people, they Good have point. a tendency to believe they just need love. But, you know, my clients are dog lovers. So what's missing from my clients? Knowledge. Yeah. So, uh, so I created the Dog Psychology Center because people needed to understand that dogs do have their own psychology. Just like men have their own psychology, women have their own psychology, child psychology, everything has a psychology. But when it comes to a dog, people turn them into humans. So they apply human psychology on a dog. 
You know what I mean? So because America loves to go to a psychologist and then say, well, let's open a dog psychology center. I'm, this is my mentality coming from Mexico. Well, listen, to keep it simple is uh, oftentimes the best thing. Of course that they, uh, they, they suffer maladies like a human being. I'm wondering, does a dog, and as much as I love dogs, I don't know the intricacies, I often wondered, would a dog feel depression? Or would, what, what's going on in their heads? Well, you know, a house, an environment can be very depressing. You know, you can enter into a place and say, oh, it feels depressing. Or, or you can be around people that are depressed and you're going to absorb the depression. So imagine you doing it. A dog doesn't have a filter. A dog immediately picks up on the negative negativity of the environment and the negativity of the people, right? Or if the activity is negative. So those are the three things that are going to influence you, you know? And, and so is depression real? It is real. Who creates it? Human. Animals are not depressed. They stay away from depression. That's what we go into nature to remove depression, right? We go into vacation so we can find happiness again. So a dog is mother nature. Yeah. I'm almost reticent to ask this because my curiosity tells me to, but I'm afraid of the answer. Uh, many times in modern therapeutic life, people are pharmacologically adjusted. We might go to that a little too easily. I think there are people it saves their lives, but I also think we might be a little too laissez-faire about our approach to it. Is there, is there a trend towards pharmacological adjustment of pets? Does that exist now? Yeah, unfortunately, people give Prozac to dogs wow. uh, because the dog shows some kind of uh, anxiety, some kind of uh, confusion. But if the dog is not getting exercise, mental stimulation and affection in that order, body, mind, heart, of course, they're going to develop frustration. They're going to be bored. They're going to be anxious, of course. And the medication is not going to get rid of it. What gets rid of it is a good walk, rollerblade, you know, go for a swim, uh, just outdoor, just just do what Mother Nature does. That means that dog yeah. has spent too much time indoor with a human that is doing the same thing. God, imagine a poor dog sitting there. He's been neutered, and he thought that was the big problem with his uh, sex life from here on in. And then they come in with, an, uh, with a depressive medicine. <laughs> this might keep you from being horny. The dog say, listen, was it not enough? Was it not enough that you took my my balls do i really have to start taking <laughs> next thing you know they'll have to get the dog viagra to get the <laughs> jesus the affairs of men dogs must look around and go and how are how am i not in charge this is absolutely crazy <laughs> we're talking to caesar milan and as i said the new show is, or not new show but it's been running for a while but caesar milan better human better dog now streaming on Disney Plus. You talked earlier about being raised on a farm with a pack of dogs. Was it your uh, father, your grandfather? Who, who did you first see who gave you that bounce that these are noble creatures that need to be honored? Who was it in your life? You know, my grandfather used to say, never work against Mother Nature. Always gain their trust, always gain their respect, and they're going to give you a beautiful gift called loyalty. So you grew up with that motto code or those motto values, yes. and that's how you view nature, right? Gain their trust, gain their respect, so they can give you and return something. So it's, it's the perception, and then, then you learn to agree that that is the way, and that you commit, and then you just follow through. So that became my first language, you know, before Spanish. You know, it's funny, uh, Caesar, is you often get your deeper Yoda level knowledge from your grandparent because the right. parents still trying to wrangle you. They got to stay with you every day. <laughs> kids can kids that can become a wild pack pretty quickly. So they've got a different sort of wisdom that they'll lay on you. You go to the grandparents who get to go home at the end of the day and they go, I'll give you some really tuned in knowledge here because I get That's to right. go home. So your grand your grandpa evidently. Uh, was that for you? What did you learn on the farm? Are dogs, um, is it a completely different community than the farm animals that you saw raised? Is there a different way to treat farm animals than there was dogs? Were farm animals as smart on the uptake as dogs? What, what did you notice? Or are they just one part, part of one big animal community? Well, the peace is equal. You know, uh, the, the, the uh, sharing of the peace to uh, animals who are, uh, you know, in the intimate space versus the one they're never going to be intimate spaces is the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that way they, they don't have a discomfort growing up. So they safe peace and love to everybody, regardless what the future is going to 
going to be. So that for me was very, very, uh, very healing or, or very healthy, you know, to grow up with that mentality, safe, peace, and love, trust, respect, love, honesty, integrity, loyalty. So all that vibration that you're doing and naturally, in a, you know, any, anybody can practice that because you don't require money to practice those simplicity. All the animals get the benefit. Also, the exercise, you know, it's not just to be there. Like, they have to actually do something for their food. And so, as we did something for our food, farm people walk a lot, you know. And so, animals walk with the farm people. Mm -hmm. So, we're constantly migrating and connecting, and we become one big family. The chickens will follow, the cat will follow, the goat will follow. So, you have all these relatives that look completely different than you, but they all follow you. I want to ask so you about, it, as a neophyte, yeah. um, and like I say, I'm a big fan of dogs, but uh, I don't have the depth of knowledge, obviously, that you do. Uh, this is not a trap question either. I don't know the answer. I know that it seems like pit bulls have more problems than other dogs. Are they all, are they all the way they're nurtured or not nurtured, or do you think there is some, uh, something in them that is a more wild side? Or, you know, I just hear stories about pit bulls. Yeah, but so those are stories. Petey from The Little Rascals was a pit bull. So can pit bulls become movie stars like Lassie and Ring Ting Ting? Yes. You know, who, who, what human, what human is behind him, right? So, so it's not the breed. Like the breed is, is like a cultural background. He's animal dog breed name. So if you don't want certain part of the breed to come out, just don't let it come out. Keep him tired. Keep him busy. <laughs> Right? Keep him tired and busy and that breed will not come out. That's it. I can see endorphins are a big thing to you. I'm wondering when you've uh, reached naders in your life or felt, felt uh, desultory, are you a big walker? Because I, I, at times in my life when I have gotten so confused, baffled, or stumbled into a bad place, I remember it's like Forrest Gump. I just think, keep moving, brother. <laughs> Find a hill and go up and keep moving. That's it. That, that's the easiest way to unlock your brain, right? And, uh, and that's it, just the movement. If there's no movement, it's stop, right? It's everything stops. So when a dog doesn't move, you see aggression, fear, anxiety, insecurity. He doesn't listen. Why? Because he's blocked. But once it's movement, look at the dogs with the homeless people. Nine out of ten homeless people have a pit bull off leash. Why? Because they're constantly moving. So why the homeless practice a natural, simple, profound, and the rest of the people don't? It's just, you know, it's movement. That's all it is. I'm intrigued to see how you are now with hard case dogs. I assume you run across some real hard cases, like anybody who's in the behavior modification business to some degree. There are dogs who have been, as you say, trained into a, a worse state than others. Uh, when you come across a dog now like that, think, think, uh, Think Boys Town or something where Spencer Tracy wants to help the, 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 ki the kid with the most problems out. Um, do you, are you touched by the challenge? Are you drawn to the challenge? Do you like getting a, a case that's not as pro forma for you? Are you intrigued by the well, challenge? Okay. That's why I created, yeah, that's why I have the ranch, 43 acres, where we have, it's a city, literally, it's a city that is for dogs who have developed problems, right? Because and some, and some dogs, they just need to run but they don't have, the land of the free, you can't just let a dog run free, right? So you need a place where this dog who has developed aggression can just run it out, you know? And so, so he can get detoxified on his own, but it's supervised by people who understand what he's going through. So for me, it's like, it's like I, just need, I just need the place. Before I didn't have the place. Yes. You know, when I had the place in South Central, it was very small. So I used to walk a lot in, you know, Runyon Canyon, Santa Monica Mountains. I was from Inglewood to South Central. I was the Mexican guy who walked a pack of dogs. So I was, you would see me in the streets, 40 dogs off leash, just walking because I was rehabilitating. But now that I have a ranch, now I do it inside the ranch with llamas, with abacas, you know, with horses and donkeys. And, and it's almost like I went back to the beginning of, of me growing up and brought it to America and I put it into like a Disney form. Where's your head at in life now? You know, sometimes when you come from humble roots, and it sounds like you did, and you, all of a sudden you're, you're Caesar Milan, for God's sakes. You're famous. Fame's an odd, fame's an odd uh, dinner date in a, in a weird way. It's everything you kind of thought, oh, that would be cool. And then you get there, you find out what it doesn't fill, you find out what it overfills, it can throw you off. Where's your head at in your Caesar Milan journey right now? 
Well, you know, it's, it's really what you follow, right? Or how you see life is, to me, God, family, self. So it's not self and then family and then God. It's God, family, self. So first I'm at service and then I serve me. So the last one is me. Because when you serve yourself, that's when your ego gets really big. You know what I mean? That's what the money, fame, and power influence your, your head. But God, family, first, that's, that keeps you humble. Yeah, I think Gail Sayers wrote a beautiful book, if I'm not mistaken, called I Am Third, which is the same, uh, the same trinity. And I think that probably gives you uh, gravity as opposed to gravitas. I think that kind of gets you settled in if you realize that the best way to go through this trip is with a, uh, a selfless intent. Well, listen, Caesar, I'm touched by the work you do with dogs. I, God bless. Uh, I, I come across dogs and I can stop on hikes. They make me melt. I just look at them and all I think in my head is they just want to be loved. Or they just want to be loved. You, you, you add the caveat. Yeah, and they want to be loved by somebody who knows how to steer the ship a little, too. So you're adding that ingredient at the end, and I think it's probably best for the old hounds. Caesar Milan, better human, better dog, now streaming on the Disney Plus if you're in the L.A. area. Or if you want to transit out here, as I said, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's neat that people take their dogs to the Dog Psychology Center in Los Angeles and work on the relationship. I assume you've got two lads now and your two sons who are going to carry forth with the, the mantle. And um, I'm heartened to know that. Nice to see you, Cesar Milan. Thank you. All right. Later, Gator. Dennis Miller, plus one.